Hello everyone, it is time to go through my best and favorite photos of 2023. I make a video like this each year and they tend to be quite popular because I get to show what I consider to be my best of the best work. This year is no exception and I'm going to go through it chronologically as always throughout the year and I will also cover composition and why the specific photo in the context it has taken is one I consider to be particularly good. I'm of course also interested to know which one of all these photos is your favorite photo. Please do let me know down in the comments. 2023 has also been my by far most busy year of my entire career as a landscape photographer. I've been traveling for more than a week each month for entire 2023 and it has been busy, but wow, have I also got some insane experiences along the way. Besides, of course, making all my weekly videos 50 plus this year, I've also finished 686 photos. <laughs> That's insane. That is more than a hundred more than last year. Because of this, it has, of course, also been hard to sort out the best of the best. And even though I made this beautiful book right here where I have 46, I'm only going to cover... 12 to 15 or so. And before we just get started, I also want to just say a massive thank you to all of you who have been watching along over the year, all the new subscribers. Thanks to all of you who have got my ebooks, my maps, my Photoshop course. It means the world to me because it is because of you that I can actually do this. And of course, also all of you who have attended one of my workshops or more of the workshops. And of course, also all of you who have actually used the sponsorships. Obviously, when we run these sponsorships that actually make a massive difference to our economy, the people who sponsor the videos, in this case here, Sal Digital, will of course only sponsor our videos if they can turn a profit from it. That's like business 101. So thank you so much to all of you who are actually using the sponsorships. And you can get 50% off on any Sal Digital product via the link down here in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. So the first photo here is actually one I took in 2022. However, I didn't release it before this year. So that's why it's here in the beginning of the book. But I just love this photo. It has this Narnia feeling to it. Like you want to like walk into it and through the tree and then you come out through the wardrobe on the other side. However, compositionally, we have, of course, the tree, which is our focal point here in the middle. And then we have some separation throughout the scene with the background trees, the mist and the fog helps with that. And then we have the foreground trees here to frame our focal point. Now, I knew that when I was releasing this video and this photo, that most of you would probably prefer this photo here. And it makes good sense with the two deer, not just one deer looking at us, but two. And how you can see that the shape of them is more or less exactly the same. So that just makes it stand even more out as a focal point and you can see how they're standing out because the background is brighter. Always whenever you have something that you want to stand out in the foreground and it's dark, make sure that it's on a bright background. The next photo I want to talk about is this one here from the Faroe Islands. We had so much snow this day and we have snow showers coming in and the weather was changing all the time. So Sometimes the light came out and lit up the foreground right here. So we have the focal point, the subject, the mountain right here. And then we have the landscape and some leading lines leading up here to me standing there to also give some scale. I also love the colors with the blues here in the shadows and then just like white light coming in. Beautiful. So obviously everything I cover when I describe composition is something I also cover in my ebooks on composition landscape photography. Here yeah, I go through balance, focal points, depth, scale, the direction of your subject, focal length, horizontal versus vertical format, central versus off-center composition, and much, much, much more. There are links to both of these ebooks down in the description of this video. The next one right here, also one of my all-time favorite tree or forest photos like we have the light coming in here backlighting the scene a little bit of mist left here it's late in the morning and the light is also lighting up 
all these foreground, well, it's kind of like dead grass, dead flowers, but it just makes them glow even more. And because they're a little bit out of focus, they, they pop with these round bokeh-ish balls. Now, what makes this specific photo particularly interesting is the pattern of the brain just right here. Of course, we have this triangle right there, but we also have this uniform kind of chaotic pattern that just makes this photo remind me of some like Celtic or Viking-esque pattern. I love actually this photo so much that I've even got a big print of it made. So this one here is also from Sal Digital and it is a white floating frame with the metal print right here in, I'm not sure the colors look proper with my white balance right here, but it looks really, really good to my eyes right here. Highly recommend that too. And you can, of course, also get 50% off on one of these with the link and the coupon code down in the description of this video to Sal Digital. So the next photo I want to talk about is this one here. This was the second time I ever got to photograph the Northern Lights in Denmark, which was a spectacular phenomenon. But what I really like about this photo is just this very strong and simple composition with the road leading into the frame. We have these trees standing right here in the middle on either side of the road. And then of course, the Northern Lights above, like a very nice central composition. And I like this one too, but there are other photos I really want to talk about too. This one here from Tuscany. We still have three spots left for our second Tuscany tour next year, if you're interested. But this trip here, we had a fantastic sunset, beautiful exploding colors, but it's actually this one here early during sunset that I like the most. It kind of looks like an Italian painting or something like that with a simple road leading in to the shot. And then we have Pienza up here, the small town, beautiful, beautiful little town. However, this photo here is one of my absolute top favorite photos of this year. And of course, it is just minimalist heaven with this cluster of trees. Again, if you're in doubt, this is also from Tuscany. But we can see this line of the ground right here, low fog down here. And what makes this photo even better holistically, like it's the entire photo that just works, is this big background cloud right here. And how it comes up, there's a little hole here, but you can see it's exactly where the trees are. And it just fills the frame with information, yet it is still super minimal. It's all about the trees right here in the middle. But yeah, oh, love it. Looks so good. And moving on, some photos from Denmark I really like. So this one here. I had foreseen that I would really enjoy this photo, and I did. It was one of my bucket list photos to photograph a glacier like this. However, as the months have passed since I took these photos, it's actually the one over here that I like the most. Because even though I've flown the drone further back, so the waterfall is smaller. It's not as impactful because of all the negative space in the photo. It is actually quite impactful. And then you follow from the little waterfall, which is still a big waterfall. You follow these melt water rivers all the way towards what you can see is the horizon. But it still seems like it just goes on forever into the background. So. It's just such a massive landscape and is emphasized by a big waterfall that even looks small right here. Love both photos, but I think it's this one here that's my favorite of them. So moving on, I love this photo of this walrus. There's just something about a walrus. There's some innocence, even though it could kill you instantly if it wanted to. But there's some innocence and some wanderers, especially about how this photo looks like does the nature the walrus look at the viewer or does the viewer look at the walrus love it i love the muted colors around it and i love this little reflection as you can see down here it's just like so arctic in its expression if you want to get one of these professional line photo books made yourself you can get 50 percent off down in the description of this video this specific one here is with lay flat sides, so they're a little bit thicker and it's the glossy paper. On top of that, in front, I have this acrylic front right here. You can also see there's no labels for Sal Digital 
or anything like that. You can completely design everything yourself in their design program, either from the bottom up or you can use one of their templates. On top of that, you can even get one of these gift box. You can put it in two. You may want to consider a little bit different size than the one I have here. It's big, it's beautiful, I love it. But if you have space problems in your home, you may want to have them a little bit smaller. As mentioned, 50% off down in the description of this video. The shot from Greenland I also really like, and of course Polar Bear, and the shot from Jan Mayen I really enjoy, but it's actually the one over here, this photo here from Iceland, with little Sophie walking right there. It's just so important when you make these photos with scale that you can actually see the person standing out on the background. So she's wearing dark clothes, so she needs to be, of course, on a bright background. So if she was standing in one of these shadow areas here, you wouldn't really see her first. So you need to make sure that you stand out. Likewise with us standing here instead of here, it just stands out so much more. But I really enjoy this photo right here of one of the most photographed glaciers in all of Iceland. And it's so nice that I was able to actually capture something original in this location. And that makes this one stand out even more for me. I also absolutely love this big panorama I got of the highlands in Iceland. I really enjoy, again, those two small people standing right there. Like, I like that she has like a pink coat on and he has like red trousers. And those colors you can see mirrored in the landscape right here with the setting sun. I like, really got the most beautiful red, pinkish, orange colors during this sunset and then just in this otherworldly landscape. As you can see, I've also like just because this is like a lay flat design in this photo book, it just folds up and looks absolutely epic. Now, another photo I also really like from my trip to Iceland with Sophie is this one right here. So I also have a vertical version, but I actually prefer this horizontal version right here because even though it kind of makes the waterfall look smaller because you have more context, because Sophie's standing there, you can still see it's a decently large waterfall with all these different cascades. Really, really enjoy this one. Sadly, this video didn't get as many views as I hoped it would because it's really one of my best videos that I've ever made on my channel. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I can link to it up here. However, besides that one, I also really, really love this one here. That is just like couples selfie gold <laughs> for getting this photo here in front of the volcano. It was such a hard photo to edit this one here because it's taken with the seven times zoom with my DJI Mavic 3 Pro and it was so noisy there were, and the colors were rather off. So it was a lot of color management and noise reduction with modern noise, noise reduction softwares in Photoshop and Camera Raw. But I managed to pull this one out here and I absolutely love how we're standing out on the background lava right here. And you can see this bubbling volcano right there. Absolutely love it. So the next one here, I also, <laughs> what's that to say? I love it. Again, a drone photo. But as much as I love this one, it's actually over here on these two next pages from the same morning where I think in the end it's actually this one I like the best. But I actually got four of my favorite photos of 2023 on this morning here. But of these three here taken with the drone, I actually think that this one here is my favorite. Even though I can argue that the composition is stronger here, and if I was to like print one of these photos hanging on my wall, it would be this one because it's not as attention craving as these ones here. But if I am to just choose one photo that I like the most of these photos here, prefer this one right here. I do have my focal point with the tree right here and this band of fog that creates this mystical effect. And then we have like the heather here in the foreground and the nice distribution of all the pine trees with the beautiful light coming in and shining through the trees right up here, like everything just coming together. However, I also really love this photo right here. I had scouted out this location like a week beforehand, so I knew about this cluster of trees right there. And I knew that with some fog that could separate them from each other into the shot and into the scene and from the background right here, 
I knew that this would also look really cool. And then I have this cluster of blooming heather right here in front. I had to focus stack this one to get this heather sharp from down here and all the way through. It is a little bit of an iffy job when there's so much depth in it. But if you want to learn how I focus stack my photos, edit my photos and so forth, be sure to enroll in my big Photoshop landscape photographer's post-processing course. It is 30 plus videos, more than 19 hours long. So obviously there is a lot to dig into. It is in this course I share all my editing techniques and tips and tricks and everything that I know about luminosity masks, focus stacking, cleaning your photos properly, how to respect the light when you edit, how to avoid all the big editing mistakes and also smaller editing mistakes and much, much, much more. There's also like 10 start to finish tutorials in this course in and of itself. So plenty to dig into. If you apply the coupon code from the description of this video, you can save a little bit of money when you enroll. There are links to that one and everything else down in the description of the video. So I also made it to Ireland this year and what a fantastic few days I had over there with Michael and Nigel and Darren and Rick. Beautiful, beautiful weather we had. Very stormy, but beautiful. One day we climbed up here and you can see this beautiful shot of the three sisters here in the background me standing here. Also a drone shot. Not the highest quality because I had to crop it quite a lot and it's taken on the seven times soon. But I love just like the central composition where it's not falling to one side or the other due to the balance. But then you also like have the separation of the mountains here in the background. It's it's quite a strong subject. I would say it looks interesting. And speaking of balance, same thing over here. We have me on the left side of the photo and then on the right side. We had the light coming in. So information on either side that balance each other out. Balance is also something I cover in my ebook on landscape photography composition. So this next one photo here is one I personally absolutely love, but it's probably one of those photos that you guys out there are not super impressed with. But this year is photographed during such a rare event. We had a big storm flood hitting Denmark. So all the water is covering the beach down here. And once the waves hit and crash against these, some of the only cliffs we actually have in Denmark, they just like blow up and due to the strong winds, they're just getting pushed up over the edge and into the forest here. And you can see the church up here for scale. It's also a focal point. And you can see how big these waves actually are. And then some birds in the sky for a little bit more interest and just how the winds are pushing on the ocean. I love this. It is just such, such a rare event. And I waited years for it to happen. So obviously this one had to make the book too. And of course, also our trip to Slovenia. It's funny that my two favorite photos from Slovenia, besides of course, Lake Bled right here, is these ones here from Jamnik, the small little church. Same church, blue hour photo, and then one here, a little bit out of the golden hour, but still with some golden light coming in right here. Beautiful, both of them, but I cannot decide which one I prefer of them. Which one do you like, Blue Hour or, or the Golden Hour-ish photo here? Let me know down in the comments. And lastly, I have it in the book. That's why I really like this Ice Beach photo here. I also like this glacier photo, but this one here is really a glacier photo I love. Again, from the drone, but with these two people up here, you can also see like the scale of this glacier. It's the same person that is standing over here. Very small, but this here is the wide angle. And this one here is with the three times soon. Both of them are like a vertical panorama that I've put together. Else, I just want to wish you a happy new year. See you on the other side. I'm not sure a whole lot will change for next year. I will continue trying to make the best possible videos, entertainment, information, and inspiration. Thanks for watching. See you.